Hi, I'm Aidan Dawkins. You're listening to a bonus story from the Undercover Podcast. In times of crisis, people rely on accurate information. Information that cuts through the agendas, the spin and the jargon. As we see newsrooms across the world continue to close and reporters being forced out of work, some journalists are proving why their profession has never been more important. Tyson Whelan has the story. It's completely different. Uh, we all got um, basically sent home like over a month ago. So we've been working from home ever since. I've had to go into the newsroom a couple times to like pick up personal belongings. And I mean, it's a ghost town. There's hardly anybody there. Um, and that's obviously created pressures on the reporters, but uh, you know, like everybody's still getting their job done. Um, despite the, you know, the challenges of uh, working remotely. From Paris to Mumbai, from Sydney to Washington DC, journalists across the world are finding new ways to tell new stories. We are living in an unprecedented moment, a global disaster of impossible magnitude. And while journalists are not on the front line of the health crisis, journalists are at the nexus of an information crisis. Fake news. It's fake. Phony. Fake news. This uh, fake news was indeed fake news. I'm not going to give you a question. Can you stay categorical? You are fake news. Sir, go ahead. Can you stay categorical? There, and I just simply appeal to media to ensure that they're going to the the official sources of advice and uh, not reporting Twitter as if it's news or anything like that, because it's not. It's not real. It's 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 gossip and, and, and nonsense in most cases, and, and it's important that we report the facts on these things. I think it's very clear. I think it's very clear that there are people in your profession that write fake news. You do. She does. There are people in your profession that write fake news. They would love to see me for whatever reason, because we've done one hell of a job. Nobody's done the job that we've done. Here in Australia, dozens of newsrooms have been laid off as news outlets rethink their business model during these increasingly uncertain economic times. Starved of advertising revenue, global news media is turning to subscription-based services to support the necessary work of the fourth estate. But right now, many are wondering how our local communities and the global community would look without journalists and journalism. As a consumer of news, I am of the belief that the work of journalists has never been more important. Streams of information spreading like the pandemic itself confuses, contradicts, and confounds. The need for investigative or shoe leather reporting are never going to go away because um, you know, like the data analysis is only going to tell you so much, right? Like if, if you um, find a trend... That this is Harry Stevens. He is a news and graphics reporter at the Washington Post. And he wrote a story on March 14th, 2020, which would become the most read story in the history of the Washington Post. gives you guidance as to which questions you ask when you go out and do reporting. So like I like to say that that the data doesn't provide answers. It, it just tells you which questions to ask. Uh, and so you're still going to need to go out there and talk to people and find out what's going on. And that's never going to go away. Harry, I wanted to ask uh, and talk about the most, um, what I understand is the most read online article in the, the history of the Washington Post. It's a story under the headline, why outbreaks like coronavirus spread exponentially and how to flatten the curve. Um, I want to ask firstly, if you're aware of precisely how many people have, have read that article and is, it is true that I understand that it is the, the most read article on the Washington Post website. It is the most read article uh, as far as like the number of people I don't know it's in the millions but I'm not sure exactly how many. What inspired it was Harry is an expert at creating digital graphics graphics that are easy to understand and paint an accurate picture of news events. 
You've probably heard the term flattening the curve, right? What about social distancing? You might not know it, but Harry Stevens' article made those terms part of your everyday vernacular. Who knows? But I do think that it was published at a good time because like here in the States, um, while there had been public calls for social distancing, it still wasn't being taken that seriously, like as a effective means of controlling the spread of virus. And like there were some widely shared clips of college kids on spring break who were just saying like, you know, I don't care if I get sick, I'm just going to keep partying as if that's brave. But it's like what, what people needed to understand was that it's not about them getting sick. It's about like killing somebody's grandparents. Uh, that's where our culture was at the time. Like we hadn't really started to take it perhaps as seriously as the situation warranted. Harry's article demonstrates why we are a separated society, using colourful bouncing balls colliding with each other to demonstrate the spread of an outbreak. He produces a unique simulation every time you reload the page, which shows how the exponential curve of coronavirus can reach epidemic proportions without a mitigation strategy. I think that it's hard to hard for people to grasp this idea of exponential growth, like just how things can really run away very, very quickly. Um, and so that was what I wanted to try to do was like to show how network effects work and then to suggest some ways that you could disrupt them. And so, you know, it's a, it was kind of a crude metaphor. Like, so there's this part where there's a quarantine and like all I did was like draw some walls in the, in the room where the balls are bouncing around and then kind of open it up. And like, I don't know how well that actually represents reality, but I think it's close enough that it was able to sort of communicate the core idea to people. You know, it was just sort of a helpful metaphor for people to understand, like it's close enough to reality that people are able to make the kind of theoretical jump from the balls to their own societies. Harry Stevens is an extremely humble man. While he'd never say it out loud, the work he does is in many ways the future of journalism. It is evocative, it is investigative, it is based on data and facts, and it serves the public, as is his oath. You know, in a sense, like, I think that my interest in making um, the news look interesting and engaging and, and trying to make it, uh, trying to make something that people haven't seen before is like an extension of that. Like, just um, my fascination with the way that you can present information in a way that uh, helps people um, engage with it, like helps people find it or, or makes it so that people are drawn to it naturally, but that also then they can learn something new. Harry's story on flattening the curve took off in moments of it being published. He says the response was overwhelming and largely it was positive. I even said to my wife, like, I, I think this is the best thing I've ever made. So I, I thought it was pretty good, but um, there's sort of like a, always a disconnect between what how good you think your work is and how the public reacts to it and a lot of times like you'll make something that you think is really great and you know just for whatever reason like people won't read it and vice versa you know sometimes you'll make something that you you know <laughs> didn't think was so great and people will tell you it's awesome so that's not always a reliable indicator of how good something is i got some responses from the scientific community and for people who do epidemiological modeling professionally, the response was like 100% positive. Wow. Like this is a really good way of simplifying the, these SIR models. And then like the other types of responses were just like, hey, thanks for doing this. I shared it with my family. And then we got a lot of uh, people just asking to translate it. So we ended up doing like 17 translations and that was really gratifying. It was like people who were saying, you know, I really like the article. I want to share it with my parents. They don't speak English. Can I, can I do a translation? So, and I ended up reaching more people that way. In some ways, what Harry Stevens produced did what no doctor, no nurse, no politician, and no medical advisor could do. Persuade the public to distance ourselves and stop the spread of the novel coronavirus to help our healthcare workers and save lives. And that we did. The journalism industry isn't perfect. It never has been, and I doubt it ever will be. But journalism at its best 
is a guardian of the truth, a purveyor of justice, and a shield for the public. Harry Stevens and many journalists across the world are proving in this moment why that matters so much and why we as a society need to appreciate what they do and what that means.